in this first problem, it asks us to sketch the graph of the function defined by the sum of um, both of the functions shown. So when we add together the functions, that's going to be adding their heights. So their x values are the same. So we're going to be adding together their y values. So when we're looking at this function here, okay, so this one and like how far, like what the height is of this one. And then we're also looking at the height of this one. So this one stays constant. This orange one stays constant at three. So we're going to be taking um, and doing three higher than this whole f function, right? Um, so it's going to be like zero plus three. So it's going to be here is almost zero plus three. Like this stays pretty close to zero. This is a little bit above zero plus three. This plus three. Um, this plus three. So these are just going to be, it's just going to be three higher kind of than that um, purple function since these heights all stayed at three. Um, for this next one, so let me just get this one drawn on there. So we've got this function, okay, which is changing the whole time, right? And then we've also got um, this function. So this one's at zero, a little bit more than zero, a little bit more than zero, and then it starts getting higher. One, two, um, and you get then you start getting some some more um, higher y values there. But so we're doing zero plus negative ten, so that's at about negative ten. We're still at about zero plus negative eight. Um, this one is negative six plus pretty much zero, a little bit more than zero, right? This is a little bit above the x-axis. Negative four, a little bit more. Um, this one's negative two plus a little bit more than um, zero. Negative one, it looks to be at about a half. So this negative one is like a half higher. At zero, this is at one. So zero plus one is one. One, this is at two. So this one's at one, this one's at two, that adds together to three. This one is at two, so the purple one's at two, the orange one is at four. Two plus four is six. At three, this one's at three, the purple one's at three, okay, and then the orange one is at eight. So three plus eight is 11. So you're slightly above this purple one, and then it starts to get higher and higher above that purple one. So the blue one is um, the sum of those. So this next one, um, again, we've got an exponential here, and then we've got a quadratic that we're looking at, and we're just adding the y values of these two functions together to get our new one. So we've got, um, like, starting here with this one, right? We've got, like, 0 plus, like, 10. So this is going to be up here. Negative 4 is at 0 plus 4. So 0 plus 4 is a little bit, is 4, right? This is a little bit more than 0 plus 4. This one's a little bit more than 1 plus 2. So a little bit more than 2. So at negative 2, this one's at, like, a half. And the orange one's at about a half. So a half plus a half is one. Here we're at, the orange one is about at zero, a little bit more than zero, a little bit less than one. So this one's about at one. Here the orange one's at zero, the purple one's at one. Zero plus one is one. Here the orange one is a little bit more than zero, the purple one is at two. So zero-ish zero plus two is two. At two, the orange one's at one, the purple one's at four, one plus four is five. At three, okay, we're at like three-ish, two-ish. So two plus like eight is 10. So two higher than the purple, right? And so then we, when we add, or when we connect those, okay, we're here a little bit above the orange and then the orange dips below the purple. And so then our function is above the purple. Now this one over here, zero plus zero is zero. Okay, so all of these are about zero. Then you get like a little bit above zero, a little bit below zero. So like one fourth and negative one fourth, zero. 
one half and negative one half, zero. One and negative one, zero. Two and negative two, zero. So these keep canceling each other out because we've got a positive and a negative. So we have opposites, so we just get back zero the whole time for that one. Number two, here are the graphs of f and g. The function h is defined by taking f minus g. So for which values would the new function equal zero? Well, if these are the same. So if f of x equaled g of x, then they would subtract to zero. So where these intersect, okay, those x values. So when x equals negative two and when x equals zero, those functions will subtract to equal zero. Um, for what values is of x is h of x less than zero? So when do you subtract to get less than zero? Well, when your um, f of x function is less than what you're subtracting from it. So when f of x is less than g of x or under g of x on your graph, right? So right here when x is below and that happens between negative two and zero. So x values of negative two and zero not equal to, so don't put an equal sign under there because when x equals negative two, the functions subtract to zero. Um, and then when are the values of h of x more than zero? Well, they're more than zero when f of x is bigger than what you're subtracting, so bigger than g of x or above g of x. So above g of x on the graph. So this is gonna be when x is less than negative two. So down here, and then when x is um, greater than zero. And then it wants us to sketch a graph of h where we actually combine these um, and subtract. So here um, we have like, so we're doing um, kind of this colored function minus the black one or the, the gray one. So we're doing like 10 minus nine. So we're at like two maybe. Um, and then nine minus eight. So that's getting closer to zero because they're getting closer to each other. And then here it's gonna be at zero. Then it's gonna start dipping below, right? So now we've got um, like four minus five. So we're at like negative one. Here we've got maybe like, I don't know, 2.5 minus 0.5, okay? And then we're at like one minus a decimal okay so one minus like 0.25 so then that's getting closer and closer so this is getting more negative and then getting closer back to zero and then it's going positive again so you're getting something like this because then now this is higher than this so now you're at like five minus negative five well that's 10 or here you're at like 15 minus negative 10. So then that's going to be at 25. So then you're kind of have a couple things to plot. But between these two points, it's negative. Below here, it's positive. Above this one, um, the subtraction is positive. Number three, the graph of each quadratic of equations is a parabola. Explain how you find the vertex by applying transformations to x squared. So we know that x squared's vertex is zero, zero. So for this one, we have a minus one. So this is gonna be a shift to the right one. So that's gonna impact the x value. And so this one's gonna be one, zero. So it's just gonna move the x value to the right one. So this is still gonna give us to the right one because we still have that minus one in here. And then this will be up five. So we're going to be to the right one and we're going to go up five from the y value. So one, five. Then this one we still have, um, we're going to move to the right one from this minus one inside. So we're going to move to one. Then um, from moving here, so now we're here and this is what our parabola looks like. Then you've got the negative out front. So that's just going to reflect it, but it doesn't change that vertex. So that's still at one, zero then we're gonna go up five. So then we're still at one five for this one. Number four, the table shows the approximate United States population and amount of sugar consumed in the given years. 
Um, and so it says about how many pounds of sugar per year work or per person were consumed each year. So then we're going to take the amount of sugar consumed divided by the number of people. Um, so 30 million divided by 5 million is about six pounds of sugar. Um, then 460 divided by 23. So 460 million divided by 23 million gives us about 20. Um, in 1900, it was 3,000 divided by 76, which is like 39.5, so like 40 pounds per person. 12,000 divided by 161 gives us 74.5, so about 75 pounds. And then in 2000, 32,000 divided by 291 um, gives us about 110 then it just wanted us to plot these numbers. Um, so in the year 1800, we were at six pounds. In the year 1850, we were at 20. 1900, we were at 40. 1950, we were at 75. And then 2000, we were at 110. Number five gives us the graph of function f, and let's use the graph to explain why the function is neither odd nor even. So you can think about this um, using reflections. Like if I reflect this over, it's not going to um, land on itself if I reflect over y. Um, and also if I reflect over y and then x, it's not going to land on itself. So you could say that, how reflect over the y-axis or not symmetric over the y-axis. And if I reflect over the y and x, it's not going to land on itself. Um, you could also say that when you look at opposites, so opposite inputs. So when I look at negative 1, if I look at opposites, they should be equal for even. Well, f of negative 1 does not equal f of 1. Like they are not giving me back the same input. That means it's not even. And then also if I look at opposites, so opposite inputs, if they give me opposite outputs, it's odd. Well, this is like negative one, I don't know, three, and this is one and maybe negative one. So these are not giving back opposite outputs either, so it's not odd. So this would mean it's not odd. So then this is kind of the idea that we're going to use in part B because it wants us to show using algebra um, that this function is neither even nor odd or verify it. So this is when we plug in the opposite x into the equation. So instead of x, I'm going to put opposite x squared minus 2 times opposite of x and see what we get back. Um, so then I'll simplify this. Negative x squared is positive x squared because a negative times a negative is a positive. Negative 2 times negative x is positive 2x. So now I'll compare it to this original function. And so we have the same for the x squared, but this, this part is not the same, right? This is the opposite. So we have same and opposite. So these do not give us back the same function meaning it's not odd, so f of negative x does not equal f of x, so it's not even, and it's not giving us back the opposite of x, okay, so, or the opposite of f of x. It's not giving us back the opposite of the function, which would be negative x squared and plus 2x, so it's also not um, odd. Number six, in the table, we have the function f, which gives Claire's height above ground in feet per second after starting her descent from the top of a Ferris wheel. Okay, so she's on this Ferris wheel. She's here, um, and she has started her descent down, and it's giving, um, you know, the height here, how far she is from the ground. So, um, and she tried two new Ferris wheels. The first one whose height is given as a function of p is half the height of the original, but turns at the same speed. So this one's half the height of the original. 
Um, and then the second one is the same height, but it turns twice the speed. So the original is half the height um, for P we want to do. And then the next one is twice the speed. So we're going to fill in the table here. So if these are going the same speed, but just half the height, we just take half of 212. And so that's going to be 106, half of 181 is 90.5 half of 10 or sorry um yeah half of 106 is um 53 and then half of 31 is 15.5 and half of 0 is 0 so now this next one goes twice the speed so this means that in um, well now, so zero seconds, she'd still be at 212 because when you haven't started, you're still at the top speed. But now after five seconds, okay, she's going twice the speed. So after five seconds, she's actually gone the same as the original at 10 seconds. So we'd look at 10 seconds and figure out that on this Ferris wheel that goes twice the speed, she's already at um, 106 after five seconds. So then after 10 seconds, she would go the same as the 20 seconds. So after 10 seconds, she'd have traveled as far as the other one in 20 seconds. So she'd be at zero feet. And then we wouldn't know what she's done in either of these because in order to figure out R of 13, we would have to know where the original one was after 30 seconds. And we don't have that. And for R of 20, we would have to know where the original Ferris wheel was after 40 seconds because she'd be at the same spot as that since she's going twice as fast. So we don't know those. Um, so if we write these two different equations in terms of the original, so P of T is just equal to half of the height of the original. And then... Um, R of T is equal to the original and then 2T on the inside. So we look at double the speed because it's going twice as fast. So like we talked about, for 5 seconds, you'd look at 10 on the original. For 10, you'd look at 20. For 15, you'd look at 30 and so on. So the, the doubled up function or the double speed is equal to 2 times the time in that one.